Ah, see him a beast when he hear that sound like ah, Yeah, beat on the beat when he hear that sound like Ooh, Yeah, bitch and the champ only me one round like ha, Yeah, me, I'm a G-Ring, he in the sound like Mike Owens here, today I'm joined by Evan Elder Who returns to action February 18th Facing Nazim Sadakov. Evan, great to sit down and chat How are things with you today? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for having me on. The pleasure is all mine. First and foremost, you must be relishing the thought of a full camp, given the given the circumstances around the last one. What has camp been like for you, and how happy and excited are you to be able to have this full camp behind you this time? Yeah, man, it really uh, it is very very exciting and uh, very happy to uh, have an extended you know um, uh, extended amount of time to prepare and. Uh, you know, game plan, strategize, and everything else. So, yeah, man, I'm super, super excited. And just uh, uh, like I was saying before we got on air, man, just super grateful, super, super grateful, man. Just can't wait to uh, get out there and uh, get to do what I love on the biggest stage. You know, I've been feel like I've been preparing for this moment my whole life. So time to uh, time to do the damn thing. You said they're preparing for this moment your entire life, but obviously your UFC debut has already been and gone in many ways. Yeah. Do you look at that first fight as a debut or is this... Is this the chance to show everyone what Evan Elder is all about? Yeah, you know, I uh, obviously that's uh, that that will yeah, it was definitely my debut, you know. Um, but uh, I feel like this is my real opportunity to kind of uh, get to show what I'm really about, you know. And I feel like I, you know, my last fight, which is no excuses, you know, is absolutely my debut. Um, and uh, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, what the circumstances were, short notice of a weight class doesn't matter. Um, uh, but I just feel like you know, due to my own error, uh, especially, you know, allowing the moment to get the best of me and stuff, I didn't perform to the best of my abilities. And um, uh, I just really didn't get to showcase, you know, what I'm really about. So I really hope that, uh, uh, you know, I get to do so this time. How do you reflect on that loss? Obviously, it was on a couple of days notice. It was also up a weight class if memory serves. So the odds were very much stacked against you. But given, I haven't said that, how do you f- reflect on the loss to Preston Parsons? <laughs> Man, it was, uh, you know, it was one of the best things that's ever happened to me, truthfully. It, I really needed to go through all that adversity and, and uh, you know, have some trials and tribulations. I haven't quite, you know, I haven't been tested like that in, in my pro career yet, you know. So I uh, learned a lot about myself and, uh, um, you know, a couple of answers, uh, a couple of answers to a couple of questions I had and, and got to, you know, see what the, the big stage is like and, um, you know, just, just much more prepared for, for anything and everything to happen, you know? So, um, it was a very great learning experience and, uh, very, very grateful for it. So it was, uh, definitely not, obviously it would have been great to uh, walk away with a win, maybe not so many, uh, cuts and bruises, but, um, uh, but as part of the game, man, it is, that's what we signed up to do. And, uh, that's what we love to do, man. So I'm just, uh, just very thankful to, uh, to walk away with a great learning experience, not just, you know, just a loss. Look, a fighter in your position 12 months ago, it's a, it's an opportunity that you can't pass up in many ways, but, but obviously, as we mentioned, there's a lot, lot stacked against you. When you reflect on it, say a couple of days or in the immediate aftermath after the fight, is there any frustration in terms of in terms of how it all panned out, or do you just look at it and you go, "What's it's one of those one of those circumstances life throws at you?" No, nah, man, I would be completely lying if I uh, if I said I didn't let my emotions get the best of me. I was super, I was devastated afterwards, man. I was just like, I couldn't believe I just let the moment you know slip through my fingers just like that, and uh, um, had my dad there with me, and you know we've been dreaming about this moment for forever. It feels like, and uh, felt like I really let let him down and uh, let myself down, you know, not performing to the best of my abilities. But um, so there was definitely a lot of emotions, but um, you know, once, once I got to remove myself from the emotions and, and kind of look back on it objectively and just be like, man, look, look at, look at what happened. You know, you were, you know, the odds were stacked against you, even though that doesn't matter um, that, uh, you know, you, dude, you got to regard us, man. Yeah. I got to fight in the UFC and uh, that's a, uh, you know, a huge, huge, um, uh, something that I, you know, obviously I've been working for, for a long time, you know, so, and hopefully this is just the beginning of a, a long prosperous career. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of great, a lot of good things to take away from it. Also, you know, it's not just, just, uh, that I went in there, got beat up and took a loss, you know? No, hundred percent. And I want to very much turn the conversation from the past to the present in many ways, because as I mentioned, you're back in action in just over two weeks time. Nazim Zadikov, what does he do well as an upcoming opponent? Give me your scouting report. Yeah, man, he does a lot of things. Well, he's really tough. Uh, you know, I've said this in almost all the interviews I've had. Um, uh, 
Uh, you know, I remember watching him on the uh, uh, on the Contender Series when he when he uh, won his fight on the UFC or the Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. Um, I was very very impressed, and I was like, man, I gotta keep an eye out for this guy. You know, he's he's good. And uh, you know, <laughs> funny enough, my very first, you know, the next fight was was uh, you know, I got scheduled to fight him, but uh, he does a lot of things well. He's uh, seems like he keeps a nice tight high guard. He's very uh, you know, pretty defensively sound, but he comes straight forward. Uh, and is going to just bring the fight to me and uh, going to try to stand in the pocket and, and trade and box with me and um, uh, try to try to try to apply a lot of pressure and probably get in my face early on, you know, and uh, start wearing me down. But I, I, I just, um, you know, obviously I've been working, you know, a lot of tactics and skills to uh, to mitigate that. And um, uh, like I said, he does a lot of things well, but I think he's definitely got some holes in his game also that I'm, I'm planning on exploiting. Where do you feel like you capitalize? Where do you feel like your key strengths over your upcoming opponents? Um, I really feel like it's just going to be in the the uh, mixing of the arts. You know, not just not just getting caught in one thing at a time. I'm not just boxing, or I'm not just wrestling. Um, you know, really little bit of a technical difficulty there. My apologies, but Evan, we were talking a little bit about where you feel like you can ca- capitalize in this upcoming fight. Yeah, I think I was just saying that, you know, just the, the mixing of the arts, you know, not getting caught just boxing, not getting caught just wrestling. It's going to be the the mixing, you know, the in-betweens, you know, uh, making them think we're wrestling and then, you know, using my wrestling to set up my strikes, my strikes to set up my wrestling, um, you know, and everything in between. So I think I'm going to be just a little bit more well-rounded than he is. And I think that's where it's going to show. You mentioned there about mixing of the arts and you, you train in a place that's very much synonymous with mixing the arts in terms of Killcliffe FC, the the gym that's had probably a thousand names in its time, but it's now called Killcliffe. Um, what's the main benefit for a fighter fighter in your position at the early start of his of his UFC career training with, with, at Killcliffe? What's the main benefit? Uh, the training partners, man. The training partners and the coaching, obviously. You know, it's like the highest level of of both. You know, we have amazing coaches, um, the best in their own regards. You know, um, Greg Jones, Henry Hoof. Coach Strout, um, uh, and you know several others. You know Nick. You know longtime UFC fighters, Nick Lance, Robbie Lawler. They're they're in there and uh, uh, helping coach now. And um, and then the biggest thing to me is just the training partners. I mean, you get every single there. There's no easy goes. Every single person in there, every single everybody on the mat is uh, you know has the same goals. It's not like you know um, whenever I live back home in Missouri, you know a lot of gyms, uh, you know the. Not too many places are you fortunate enough to have a professional fight team. So you get a lot of, you know, hobbyists or uh, people just trying to take classes. And then, uh, you know, you might have to. Uh, As you were yeah, saying, when you were talking about Killcliffe FC. Yeah, the biggest thing is just the training partners, man. It's just there's no easy rounds. Everybody's everybody's driven. Everybody's uh, everybody's competitors, you know. So it's like those uh, those times that you want to uh, even subconsciously, even subconsciously when you're tired, you start looking for ways you can take breaks. Um, uh, you know, our ego will deceive us and make us think that that we're not, you know, that because especially in something like what we do, you know, everybody wants to be the alpha. Everybody's trying to be um, ultra competitive and. Um, uh, but even then our subconscious, our, our, or our ego, um, will, uh, deceive us and, and start trying to make us feel better by taking, th- taking rounds off or finding people that are, you know, easier to go with somebody you're going to have an advantage with. Uh, and that's just, it's, it's hard to find here. You know, it's like, there's no easy rounds, even when you're exhausted, like you looking around for like, who's my easiest round, you know? And it's like, there's none, you don't, there's no running from it. So you get to uh, face that head on and uh, uh, that's fighting. You know, I think that is what, what fighting really comes down to is, is uh, you know, later on, you know, in the deep waters when, when everybody's tired, uh, that stuff really exposes itself. You know, those times whenever you take the rounds off in the gym or, or you're trying to find somebody that you can, you can dominate um, all that stuff gets exposed whenever we get exhausted, you know? And uh, uh, I think that that's like one of the greatest attributes of of training here is there's absolutely no easy round and every single training partner is you know almost at the highest level you mentioned there about being back home in missouri and in a lot of situations a guy in the ufc would be the main man in his gym he'd be like the head honcho uh you know the, the role model to others but at this point where you are in your career if when you look around your gym and you see all the names and all the accomplishments that the, the other fighters have accomplished 
is it nice being the young hungry lion and having the the older role, role the older role models to to fight to work up against yeah absolutely man i uh dude i ain't freaking i ain't nothing you know i i haven't done nothing uh my name don't mean anything uh i'm, I'm a nobody still you know so uh i haven't earned nothing yet and uh, i love that you know that's the way i um that's what i hope to be you know my whole entire fight career i hope that uh i'm never in a position where i'm the the best in the room you know I'm, i want to always be surrounded by people that are better than me because that's how you continue to grow and evolve and get better you know and and, uh, you know, hopefully for the rest of my life, I continue to do that, you know, to eventually be the greatest version of myself that I can be. But especially during our competitive career, you have to you have to, you know, try to optimize that. So, uh, yeah, I love I love being I love being the nobody because uh, uh, that's what I am truthfully right now. You know, now, with that being said, a lot of your documented process on Instagram and TikTok comes in the form of your uh, fighter lyrics videos where you walk around the gym and ask other fighters to to fill in the lyrics of particular songs. Where did, <laughs> where did that come from, and who is the best in the gym of getting these lyrics right? Uh, I don't know where it necessarily came from. I probably just seen it from uh from somebody else, you know, seen seen a video on on Instagram or something, and started doing it. But um, yeah, man, I love doing that just because it's so funny. It's so fun just walking around, you know. Because man, we it's funny because we have a gym full of absolute savages. Like it's like literally some of the highest level fighters in the world. Uh, but everybody there, man, is just so amazing people, and uh, uh, we all love to have fun and just you know enjoy our time. So um it's fun getting to do stuff like that but as far as the the best with finishing the lyrics I don't, I don't know who necessarily would be like the best um I feel like uh Jason Jackson always does well uh Delano Taylor um uh I can't even think of anybody else uh, my boy Elvin Espinosa usually does pretty good um but yeah man it's what I love the, I love making those videos no, hundred percent, hundred percent. I've got to ask you about the main event of this card: tantalizing and Van Tweet match up between Marlon Vera and Corey Santagen. Who do you fancy in this in this fight? Who do you who do you predict to to be the main event winner? Oh man, that's a uh, such an incredible fight. I uh, it's, it's super dope that I get to be on that card. Um, I uh, man, truthfully, I'm a big fan of both, but um, I really I kind of think Sanhagen's just gonna have way too much volume. And uh, just end up outpacing him. I'm a huge Corey Sanh- uh, Corey Sanhagen fan, and uh, man, both of these guys. You know what? I'm such a big fan of both of them because, especially because of their mentality. And I feel like these two of the both of these guys have two of the most dog mindsets in the game. You know, uh, but I think they it shows themselves. It it, it it reveals itself in different ways. Though Corey Sanhagen's is in the sense of like I'm going to constantly be pressuring you or just out voluming you i'm gonna i'm gonna outwork you the whole time um cheeto vera is like on the other hand just staying calm in the fire you know no matter what's going on it could be the most chaotic situation but he's just staying calm and collected and looking for his opportunity you know so it's i feel like they're very contrasting styles actually but um you know i think that cheeto vera could absolutely um find the whole you know find his timing and uh uh you know find one or two big shots to to put San Hagen away but i think ultimately it's probably going to come down to um uh Corey San Hagen just uh outworking and uh overvoluming uh Cheeto Vera if i had to guess 100% obviously we want to turn the conversation to your fight and of course the prime focus is february 18th but if we look ahead to the rest of the year evan what are your essential goals for 2023 where would you like to be come we are struggling with the technical difficulties tonight, so I'm going to finish on this final question, Evan. I was having a little bit of a look through your Instagram page the other day, and I saw you had posted a photo with presumably your family, and you talked about you mm-hmm. had, throughout the photo you had the words "why your why," and why you did it. Can you give me a little bit of an insight into into a, an explanation of that photo? What what exactly is your why? Why do you put yourself through this career for, for greatness? I uh, man, there's a. Uh... It's a very open-ended question. There's a lot of answers I could give for that, but uh, uh, to keep it relative to that picture and stuff, um, man, my family. Um, try not to get emotional here, uh, but man, I just my family is my absolute biggest why, you know, <clears throat> and uh, I just truly want to be the best that I can be for, uh, you know, to make them proud, make my parents uh, proud of the, the son, the man that they raised, and. Uh, be able to give my uh, little sisters, my brothers, um, you know, someone to look up to, especially with me being the oldest. So, um, 
you know, just hopefully inspire them to uh, be the best versions of themselves that they can be. And then also, <clears throat> also be able to um, give them a life that uh, I think that they deserve because just <laughs> like I mentioned, I think before we got on air, but God's blessed me with uh, a lot of, a lot, a lot of things, man. I have way more blessings and live a better life than I deserve, but my, my, uh, the people in my life and especially my family, man, are by far my greatest blessing. So um, they would just mean the world to me if I could, uh, um, you know, give them the life that I feel like they deserve, you know, because they've uh, truly loved and cared for me and given me more than I could ever expect or imagine. And uh, they, they really are my, at the very forefront of my why, you know? So um, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> no, beautiful way for us to end. And that was, as I say, that was an open-ended question. I, I appreciate your honesty and it was, a, it was a great thing to hear. Evan, thank you so much for your time. It was really great to sit down and chat. Uh, I wish you the best of luck for, for the fight later this month. And if there's anything you'd like to say and sign off with, the floor is yours for the final word. Uh, first off, I just want to say thank you for having me on. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, talk with me and uh, to uh, all my friends, my family, my supporters, my loved ones, everybody. I love you guys so much and uh, hope that uh, hope that February 18th I get to make you proud and uh, tune in. It's going to be a good one.